Salute, mob tube. How's everybody doing? <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know, guys. What did you think? Um, uh, pretty much a monumental waste of time, but, uh, you know, you're never going to get to, uh, get a liar to admit that he's lying. All you can do is call him out. Uh, and I know, you know, I can't make everybody happy. Some people said I went too easy on him. Some people said I went too hard on him. I don't know how much harder I could have gone on him, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, come on. That was, uh, you know, and I didn't want to fucking be sitting there yelling at an old man. You know what I mean? That's not like me. But he did call me earlier in the day with stacks on the phone. And he was fucking screaming at me. So I knew that would, you know, eventually wind up, uh, wind up happening. Let's see some comments. Carlos Muniz, South Philly, I'm still laughing. Lexi Johnson, I've been waiting two years to see someone rip Ray Mundy. When I first heard of him was long ago, and I can't believe how much he came into the light. Thank you, FBS. Thank you, Lexi. Muscles Mananad, uh, bro, I'm watching uh, this carny right now. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, guys, listen. Uh, I wasn't bullshitting. I want you guys to see something. My man Frankie sent me something earlier today. Uh, I actually called him and talked to him, and then he sent me the link. Uh, look up. Maybe I could figure out a way to drop the link in here. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me just do that. Um, well, I'll just tell you about it first, and then I'll drop the link. It's called Coney Island Dreams for Sale. Okay, You'll find the trailer. All right, it should be the top result. Look it up on YouTube, Coney Island Dreams for Sale. And you'll see a documentary with this guy. Uh, well, a trailer for a documentary. Looks a little different, but basically the same with the fucking track suits. And, you know, he sounds pretty much the same. Um, but, you know, you'll see that this dude, he was a carny. And there's a fucking article. Uh, I'll even read you the article. Well the piece that uh, pertains to him. Um, let me see. Hang on here. Mm -hmm. I should have just uh, uploaded this and then I could put it on the screen. Wrong Frank. A lot of Franks. Um, okay. You ready? I'm going to read it to you guys. Um, now, his one of his boots, he had three, I believe, in Coney Island. One of them was called uh, Gangster Cigars, right? Upon receiving various co complaints late last year, the city cleared out the old school carnival games, including one booth called Gangster Cigars that was caught ripping off customers on a hidden camera by Arnold Diaz of Fox New York's Shame on You. Okay, uh, this is from the Metro, by the way. I just want to give them credit. Uh, patrons would routinely lose hundreds of dollars trying to toss a rigged ping pong ball through a hole to win a flat screen TV. Okay, that's um, that's about uh, Ray Mundy. Okay, and one of his, you know, scam fucking. Uh, carnival boots in Coney Island. So he was scamming people. You know, he was a con man then, and he's a con man now. Um, let me get to this real quick. Tom Lochner, 499. Thank you, sir. With all his cousins and uncles, can you imagine the tables of food at their family reunion? Yeah, yeah, no shit, right? You had the whole fucking commission. You had everybody, every fucking major gangster in the last 50 years was there. Um... Frankie Loke, you're right. Get those uh, get those likes up, please. Hit that like button. Uh, you whacked the fucking Pope. <laughs> oh, shit, man. I'm telling you. Oh, my God. Cuban B, that was hilarious, FBS. Thank you. I mean, what other way could I have possibly... Um... Oh, is that the link, Carlos? Yeah, because I sent this to Carlos earlier in the day in a text. So Carlos actually saw this little clip. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I could have fucking made it more clear. Like, we're not going to believe you. You're full of shit. You're a fucking liar, man. Like, you're, um, like I said to him, you're just a con man. You know what I mean? And, and I hate people like that. You don't understand. This is why I started the thing with A-Life. I can't stand people that just want to just blatantly insult our intelligence by going on these YouTube shows and writing these books and telling these lies. So you killed, you, you, you were involved with the killing of the Pope. No proof of that. Okay. Uh, you killed Salvatore Sally Burns Grinello, but you didn't. You killed his third cousin with the same exact name, but there's no proof of that. And even his death, you can't find proof of unless you go to the government and ask permission to get records. You're telling me a guy's death isn't on record somewhere? We're not talking about you killing him. We're talking about his death. There's obituaries. There's things out there. No, no, no. It's sealed. Sealed. So whoever the Salvatore uh, Granello guy was, the Sally Burns that he killed, um, who just happened to be killed, by the way, at almost the exact same time as the Salvatore Sally Burns Granello. There's no proof of that either because those records are sealed because he was a minor. Um, by the way, you know <coughs> that when he originally started, goddamn, telling that story, he was talking about these <coughs> wrong pipe people, the Salvatore Sally Burns Granello. But somebody probably called him out or he knew people or <coughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> Let me try, try this again. I'm losing my voice. It's like I was yelling at somebody all night. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, he was talking about the Salvatore Salvi Burns, Sally Burns Granello, and then obviously somebody either called him out or he knew he was eventually going to get called out. So he started with the, no, 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 it was his third cousin, third cousin, with the same exact name. Nickname and everything, exactly the same. <coughs> Ridiculous. Um, it wasn't that, bro. Believe it or not, I don't actually have smoker's cough. I barely cough. I fucking drank the water and it went down the wrong pipe. I know I do, bubblegum gangster. Stop it. <laughs> I know, man. Um... Yeah, it was crazy, man. Uh, you know, and I didn't expect anything different. I didn't expect him to be like, all right, guys, I'm lying or I exaggerated. No, they just stick with their stories. So there's no proof of the Sally Burns murder. There's no proof that he ever went into the military. There's certainly no proof that he ever killed 300 people. There's no proof of the thing with the Pope. There's no proof of him being connected to anybody in the Colombo family or the Colombo family itself ever in history. Um... <laughs> All we actually have video proof of now is him being a carny in Coney Island and owning uh, concession stands and, and ripping people off. That's it. That's all we have. We don't have proof of anything else he says. He goes to Nigeria. He sneaks into Nigeria. He right away is able to side up to a fucking drug lord in Nigeria. Guy from New York who, who they've never seen before is like, yeah, here he is. What do you need? Two keys? No problem. Then he tells me he wants a quarter ton. <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah. And then he tells him a joke in the car to distract him. And while the guy's laughing, he shoots him in the back of the head. What the fuck is going on in the world, man? And it's so funny that JC brought up Jeremy DeWitt. Because for all you guys who, who don't know who Jeremy DeWitt is, he's this Florida funeral escort. Which I didn't even know a funeral escort service was a thing. I thought funeral processions just drove from one place to the next. Apparently, this is a, a thing. And this guy, Jeremy DeWitt, owns this, uh, what's it called? I'm sure somebody will fill me in. Fuck me. It, he made it sound as much like a, like, like a police department as he could. And um, so they escort funerals, but he thinks he's a cop. He acts like a cop. He tells his people to act like cops. He's got the sirens, the horns, the lights, everything on his fucking bikes. He's constantly in trouble. And on top of that, he, um, you know, he also does the stolen valor thing. You know, he pretend, he shows up to events in these military uniforms and he acts and talks as if he was this, this big time soldier who, who like, you know, served in, in all these different countries and play Metro state, right? Absolutely. Metro state. <laughs> That's it. Um, 
And, you know, he has that on his little windshields on his bikes because he wants it to look like he wants to look like the police, even though he denies that. But he was even on Dr. Phil. Like, this guy is the worst police, a police impersonator I ever saw in my fucking life. It's a miracle to me that this guy isn't gone for, for the rest of his life in prison. But he um, he tells these stories about military service. There's no proof he ever served in the military. Matter of fact, people checked and he just hasn't. And it doesn't stop him. That people know he was never in the military. He claims to have been a cop at one point. He was never a cop. So when people say things like yesterday, somebody said there must be some truth to Anthony Luciano Ramundi's story because nobody just makes these things up. Yeah, they do. Look up Jeremy DeWitt. Look at this fucking psychopath and you'll see. Um, so basically the guys are mentally ill actors. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Listen, guys, no bullshit. Look up Jeremy DeWitt on YouTube. Watch these. I was hooked on this shit for like a week and a half a few months ago. That's all I watched. Like videos of this psychopath doing 100 fucking miles an hour through traffic and honking his horn, banging on people's cars, trying to get them to pull over, literally pulling people over. And he's arrested over and over and over because he's fucking breaking the law. He's pretending to be a cop. But somehow he keeps getting out and he keeps going. But it's entertaining as as could be. Apex Predator 69, FBS. If Anthony had a dollar for every time, he said what and jerk off. He could buy a hearing aid and a new phone and a new light. You know, that's another thing that upset me. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's a that's a tactic, I think. Just like Johnny, right, when he was doing recall, and he was, you know, going crazy with his phone and it was all over the place and he kept cutting out. That's a tactic when you know you're being called out. That's a way of like, you know, oh, just in case anything happens, I'll just shut my phone off. And since I'm having these technical difficulties, it'll look real. Um, Anthony Ray Mundy on this thing on chatting with Stacks. That phone, it pisses me off so bad because that would have been a good show. Like, like I'm still trying to decide if I want to put that up on my channel. But the sound was so bad because whatever it is with this streaming and these microphones, you see it in my interviews all the time. You'll hear me loud and clear and the guest loud and clear till we talk over each other or there's some background noise. And then we get totally muffled out. So with that stupid crackling, it sounded like his phone was smoking a fucking rock. With that crackling going on, you can't even hear us. You can barely hear me. Half the shit I was saying was muffled. You can't hear it. So this is a fucking shame. What's the name of the channel? Uh, there's all different ones, but uh, there's one main one. Let me look. I think you're talking about Jeremy DeWitt. If you just YouTube Jeremy DeWitt, you'll find fucking hundreds of hours of shit. But there's one, uh, Real World Police. Yeah, I think it's Real World Police. Has a lot of Jeremy DeWitt shit. I mean, this dickhead wears body cameras because he does everything to look like a cop. Bulletproof vest. You know, he even carries a pellet gun that looks exactly like a real gun. Okay. Even though this dude is a felon because he's a fucking sex offender. That's another thing. This guy's a registered sex offender. He carries uh, a gun that looks exactly like a real gun. It's a pellet. Uh, no, it's a tear gas gun, a pepper spray gun. Pepperball gun, that's what it is. Um, carries all the flashlights, carries handcuffs. Guy's a funeral escort. Why does he do it? Makes him look more, more like a cop. He does everything he can to look like a fucking cop. And, um, you know, like I said, he's constantly in trouble for it. He He's a fucking lunatic, man. And so anyway, he wears these body cameras and he tells all his guys to. The problem is they're wearing the cameras while they're breaking the law, while they're splitting lanes and, and, you know, cutting through traffic and literally going 110, 120 miles an hour through traffic, running red lights, everything you can imagine. Then the cops get them. They, they, they uh, confiscate the body cameras and boom, they got them committing the crimes on their own cameras. This guy is the biggest douchebag you've ever met in your life, um, without a doubt. Well, Jeremy DeWitt. Let me see here. Mm, it should be real world police, man. Most of the shit is on. Cop Watch has some. Um, there's the Dr. Phil thing. More Cop Watch, Dr. Phil. Real world police, yeah. Real world police is the best one. But like I said, all you got to do is uh, Jeremy DeWitt, D-E-W-I-T-T-E. -T -T -E, and you'll see all this shit, man. It's great. He carries hooker guns, Lexi Johnson. That's good. 
JC in the house, Beantown916, what's up? Um, JC Capone76, how you doing, man? It's good to see you, bro. I'm glad you're in here. Everybody say what's up to JC. And if you haven't already, go subscribe to JC's uh, YouTube channel, please. Otis Driftwood, 499, thank you. What's up with you and Jeff? You guys are not doing no more shows together. Jeff started doing, you know, I think Jeff's whole point was eventually to just start doing his own shows. So he does his own thing now. I do my own thing. I talk to him every day. So I know people would like to think there's some beef because of that bullshit. There's not. Um, He's just, you know, we're just doing our own things. Me, JC, if you're talking to me, no, I'm not truly amazing, JC, you are. Uh, you're an inspiration, my friend. Yeah, I'm not going to get into bashing Jeff. Who, Anthony Raimundi is the only thing on Pacer is his bankruptcy case? Yeah, I got the Pacer thing. I got my little uh, coin or whatever it's called, token, and uh, I still haven't started using it. Um... Oh, I wanted to say something, guys. I don't usually do this often, but I was in the wrong here. Yesterday I said about Lee Cole uh, kind of taking subliminal shots and kind of telling me how to run my channel. I did, you know, I did totally jump the gun on that. I fucked up, and when I'm wrong, I admit I'm wrong, no matter who it is. Um... Lee didn't mean that towards me. He called me and it, he actually explained who he was talking about and it wasn't me. So I do apologize. He still does take some liminal shots every now and then. But in that case, yesterday, he wasn't uh, talking about me taking videos down. And all. He was talking about somebody else. Thank you, JC Capone. I appreciate it, man. JC and McCallie, I looked him up. Uh, I looked him up and I could find uh, it was an old pager bill he owes for real. <laughs> Kelly G's don't rat. That guy tries to act like the Iceman. That's why I said yesterday, I'm going to start calling him Anthony Iceman, Luciano, A Light, or Mundi. But listen, you know what? For the first time in my life, I'm going to give A Light credit. Because compared to this fucking guy, A Light is the capo de tutti capo. <laughs> this motherfucker is the godfather. He's the boss of bosses, A Light, compared to this dude. Because this guy, there is nothing, nothing. I tried everything, man. There's nothing. And a guy who got a hold of me earlier is a fucking Intel analyst. And uh, even he said all he could find was the article about him shooting himself. And I know he said that wasn't him. It was his cousin. Everything is somebody's cousin with this jerk off. It was him. Unless his cousin is the exact same age and has the exact same name as him. It was him. He shot himself in the leg July 26th of 2020. Um, he had a, gun, a Derringer in his pocket, of all things, and he shot himself in the leg. Um, but yeah, there's nothing other than the article about him shooting himself in the leg, the article from Fox NY about him, um, or uh, whatever that, that publication was from, um, about him scamming people at his booths. And uh, this, this clip, this... Um, Dreams for Coney Island, dreams for sale, this trailer. That's all that can be found. And, of course, the stuff he says about himself. Everything you look up is something he said about himself. If he's mentioned about the, the death of the Pope, it's a story he told. It's not anybody just saying that he might have been involved. They're saying that he said he might have been involved. Um, so, yeah, all that shit. Um, that's, that's what you can find, man. Him talking about himself... And some scams and bullshit he was involved in. And this guy wasn't in the mind. You can see on this thing, he, was a, he wasn't a wise guy who owned concession stands. He was a concession stand owner who owned concession stands. That was it. He was a carny. He literally ran those games and shit on Coney Island on the fucking boardwalk. Like, that's what, you know what I mean? So, don't, um. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm already sure you guys won't let him fool you, but, um. Nothing, what's about mind someone else's business? Nothing he says is true. He's full of shit, man. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a fucking con artist. And I don't know how much clearer I could have made that tonight. 
Uh, I had questions in order. I knew I wouldn't get to them in order because a guy like him won't let you. He'll just talk, 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 talk. Um, hold on. Uh, um, yeah, he'll just talk over you and he'll just keep saying the same shit over and over. So it's not like you're going to get, you know, any organization trying to talk to that guy or interview him or debate him. But everything that I had, you know, in my phone that I took notes from and shit, I got to all of it at some point. I think I got to all of his claims that he's made. Um, Because there's pretty much only a handful of them. And I, I'm pretty sure I got to all of them. So I did my best. Uh, oh, I don't get to that. Bubblegum gangster, guy who runs a uh, stand at a carnival or boardwalk. Yeah. Uh, Sicilian, you're an investigative journalist in hiding, bro. <laughs> Thanks. You know what, though? I could be. I'm actually really good with, with doing research, even though I make mistakes every now and then. It's something I've always been good at. Bubblegum gangster, guy who runs a stand at a Oh, I already went over that. Yeah, I used to be real good with uh, checking people out when I met people when I was doing illegal shit trying to find out who they were, where they're from, and then I'd research every case they ever had, if they have any open cases, all that shit. That's how I got started and stuff like that. But Frankie Logue, if he was with the Columbus during that time frame, Franzese would have known him. Of course. Of course. You know what I mean? And and he said something like Franzese did say at one point that he knew him. No, he didn't. No, he did not. Franzese said, I never met him. Um, so, And it's not because he's mad at him or anything. It's because he really never met him. Uh, Dan Moore, 499 FBS. I owe you an apology for busting your balls about giving Jimmy C a wrench. After you explained it last night, it made some sense to me. Peace, bro. Well, thank you, Dan Moore. I'm actually glad you said that. I'm glad that I um, explained it well enough that it made sense to someone. Because, you know, sometimes I just rant. But thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh... Who said that? Bob Gray, race hustler Tyreek Nasheed just said the Italian mob was never shit. Well, who the fuck is he? Who is that guy? Is that somebody in here? Jason Mike said, absolutely. You can find out anything about anyone. That's for real, man. It's scary to an extent, bro, because you really can. And all you need is a name. That's about it. Uh... I'm going to be honest, when he started trying to threaten you, it pissed me off. Well, if you notice, that's when I uh, took it up a notch. Because that shit I don't fucking play around with. I don't even care if I know you're a clown who's not, you know, who's harmless. Uh, that pisses me off. Don't fucking threaten me. I don't threaten anyone. Did you hear me once say, like, oh, yeah, I'll come and get you or I'll do this? No, because you know why? You sound like a pussy when you're sitting behind a computer acting like a tough guy, calling people out, you know, to a physical altercation or some shit. That's why I didn't even play into that. I was just laughing at him because he's a fucking clown but yeah trust me it pissed me off too i don't play around with threats like that where i come from like you don't make threats but you just act and if you make threats you better watch out because the dude you threaten is probably going to get you first brooklyn guy Vinny Bracco, you, i think you guys didn't embarrass him oh you think we didn't i don't know i think i did <laughs> Uh, Bob, Bubblegum Gangster Tyreek Nasheed is another racist jerk off and pay no mind to him. He's a miserable black man. What's his platform? What does he do? Yeah, I know, Remo, but you know what? And, and listen, I got an email from somebody who's, you know, I believe was in, uh, might have been the Special Forces, I think. Um, and they were explaining to me the differences with the tattoos and stuff. But I hate when I make mistakes. I made a couple on my show yesterday that were ridiculous. I don't want to fuck up and say something that I'm I'm not, that I don't know for sure. And I know nothing. I'll be the first to tell you. I know nothing about the military, the branches. The, I mean, I know the branches, but I don't know the tattoos that go with each branch, the symbolism, the, the, the medals, stuff like that. I don't know. But um, as it was explained to me, he claims to be a Marine and that t tattoo was like an army special forces. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know what to, um, you know, I didn't want to go hard at that because I might have wound up just making a fool of myself. Um, 
Brooklyn guy Vinny Bracco, why warn anybody exactly? That's not street shit. You know what I mean? If you're going to do something to somebody, the last thing you want to do is tell them. Brooklyn guy Vinny Bracco, you were fair. I tried to be <laughs> at first. Uh, but, you know, it got to the point where I just wanted, I didn't want that interview to end without me just straight up saying, listen, it doesn't matter what you say. I'm never going to believe you. You're full of shit. You're a liar. Nobody should believe you. You shouldn't get book deals. You shouldn't even be on fucking YouTube doing interviews. And shame on anyone who interviews you because you're um, you're a fucking liar. And, and it's obvious. It's not even like, listen, it, it, at least with Ailey, like I said, you have to have some knowledge of the mob. With this guy, you don't even need that. You just need common fucking sense to figure out he's, he's lying. You know what I mean? Um, Michael McDonald. Yeah, his threats uh, pissed me off also. That's bullshit and proves he's mad. He got called out as the fraud he is. Here in Baltimore, threats can get you killed. Yeah, no shit. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, but... A guy makes a fool of himself when he does something like that. That's another reason. First of all, I was never one to make threats, but I'm certainly not going to do it on this fucking... Because then you do look like a pussy. Listen, anytime you make a threat like that to a guy who's, you know, in another state behind the screen, and you're in another state behind the screen, you only make an ass out of yourself. You're not making an ass out of them. He calls me the pussy. You look like the pussy threatening me over the fucking internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so... And trust me, that dude is harmless. If I showed up tomorrow to Bay Parkway and I went wherever he is, uh, it would be nicey nice talk. Guaranteed. <laughs> it would like Dice used to say, nicey nice. Uh, there would be no, and it's not because of me. So I'm such a physically imposing or threatening man. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying this guy is not dangerous. I'm telling you that too, other than to himself. I mean, the only thing he ever shot was himself. But I'm not. Uh, and he, what a dumb thing to say, come to Brooklyn so I can show you. You think I give that much of a fuck that I'm going to drive two, two and a half hours, whatever it is, to Brooklyn? Now, don't get me wrong. I love Brooklyn uh, even more than where I grew up in Queens. I've always loved Bensonhurst, Bay Ridge. I love it. I've always loved it. Um, and I spent so much of my life in those places that I'll go there for no fucking reason, just to go to a bakery. I used to go there for my records, clothes, everything. I would take day trips to, to Brooklyn all the time. Um, but I'm going to go there. I'm going to make a special trip for you. So you could show me, he's not going to show me paperwork either. He doesn't have any, but he has to say what he was saying because he has to try to make it seem like, yeah, I really have this paperwork. You can't put up anything up to the screen, any proof of anything. Even that article, he's holding up the article. All you can see is the fucking headline. And even if you got the text in the picture, like we're going to be able to read that shit. And I looked it up. Uh, Lombardozzi and Franzese. That's it. Those are the two names in that article. He's not in it. Okay. If he was affiliated with Franzese or even Lombardozzi, uh, we would have known. Trust me. We, we, we'd be able to look back on that shit. He wasn't. So, I'm all stuffy and shit. I think I'm getting fucking sick. Mob Facts 199. Hey, bro, I found articles on Anthony on my channel. Really? Well, I'm curious to know about what. <laughs> what do you mean you found them on your channel? Well, facts. His name is actually there. Not trying to hack your channel or anything. What on that specific article? Because the one I was looking at was about that uh, Kiwanis Club and all that shit, and it wasn't in there. But me, I mean, there's different articles for the same events, I'm sure. I put it up. I put it up in a video. All right, I'll look at it. it still don't make a difference. I still don't, nothing about, uh, nothing changes about my opinion of him or his bullshit. Uh, nothing. But yeah, I'll look it up, man. Uh, that's your channel, Mob Facts? Good way to get a plug, by the way. All right. <laughs> clever, clever son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, yes, it's the Kiwanis article. Uh, yeah, I'll look it up again. Uh, the one I looked up, though, uh, swear to God. But like I said, there's, you know, for one event, especially if it's a mob event, there could be 500 different articles. But the one I looked up real quick only had those two names in it. 
Oh, yeah, I got to say, too. I don't know what you guys think, but one of the funniest parts of that video to me was Stax just chilling. <laughs> just like, just sitting there listening, knowing I got fucking gold here. What a good show. <laughs> oh, man. Big man, I'm betting $5. Uh, thank you, uh, Jeff. He also mentions he killed someone at 16. If he did, he'd go to state time, not fed time. Uh, keep it MCC wasn't open at that time. It was a state charge anyway. Yeah, I said all that. Yep. I said that he was 16. Then he changed it. I think he said he killed the guy at 16. Then he changed the time he went to the military to 17, which before it was 16. Um, and yeah, MCC didn't open until 70, uh, 75. That crime took place in 70. Um, and yeah, it would have been a state charge. Absolutely. Everything he's saying is bullshit. Uh, 16 years old, he got shipped to Atlanta USP. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, shit. Uh, mob facts. He was associated with that, apparently. LOL. I'm going to try to find some info about Sally Burton's cousin or killing in the Cadabra Club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I know. Remo, under 24 for murder. Listen, the thing he's talking about, and I just read up on it yesterday. There, yeah, there was, there was, there was a Youth Offenders Act that's federal. Okay, it's federal. And like, like Jeff said, um, we're talking about something that would be a state crime. Um, the feds wouldn't pick him up on that. And that's why he says they picked him up because they said it's a civil rights violation. When was the last time you heard of somebody shooting somebody 13 times in the head, blowing their head clear off, and only being charged with a civil rights violation? <clears throat> Absurd. Um, so the feds would have had to pick it up. I mean, youth offender thing... You can't just commit any crime, any crime. You could just kill 600 people, mass shooting, anything. You, you can only get seven years tops. Guys, come on, man. Absurd. JC West Coast, thank you for the five, my friend. Ray Mundy's one of those clowns who challenges you to a fight and names a place. And when you say he's, uh, when you say yes, he starts naming places further away <laughs> until you got to say no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, I'll be a bay. I'll be a bay parkway. No, you know what? Make let's make it a Long Island, uh, Nassau County. Um, all right, that'll be cool. No, you know what? Fuck that. Meet me in Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo. All right, it's a trip. Uh, no, no, no. You know what? Montreal. Uh, meet me in Montreal. <laughs> mm. LOL, bullshit, and only have four bullets, but it's a different Sally. That one's sealed. Yeah, of course it's bullshit, because he, I'm sure when he started that story, he wanted it to be about, um, the, you know, he was going to take credit for the real Sally Burns murder. But people probably started calling him out on it. So he was like, oh, I'll just say it was a third cousin. And never be specific. You're just telling us Sally Burns Granello, Salvatore Sally Burns Granello, had a third cousin named Salvatore Sally Burns Granello, and they were killed at basically the same exact time. But there's only proof and a record of one of those murders just happens to be the one you didn't commit. Come on, man. Uh, 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 real gangsters don't show paperwork on social media, FB. Yeah, but uh, we weren't talking to a real gangster. We were talking to a fraud. So. Uh, like you said, there would be an obituary. Of course. You could find Salvatore Sally Burns Granello's. All you got to do is put his fucking name in. The first thing you're going to see is stuff about his murder. Um, well, what's mob facts saying? Go watch my video. You can see his name. Yeah, I'll check it out. But so what are you telling me? You believe him now? All his bullshit because of that? Because he might have popped up on one case? Uh, when you mentioned Sammy, uh, he got shook and the phone went black. Yeah, Stax mentioned Sammy and he was right. 
And he says, I never knew of Sammy being in the Colombo family. What do you mean? How could you know Sammy's story and not know about that? How? I don't know. Um, okay, here it comes. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Is this a... Uh, I don't know what's going on here, guys. <laughs> Frankie Loke bullshit paperwork is always checked, bro. Real G's ain't afraid to show paperwork. Very true. Um, hold on. You know what? Let me just check this thing real quick. Uh. Sorry, guys, just give me a second here. I can't even find... Uh... I can't even find your channel, bro. Why don't you uh, email me the fucking link? Fat bald Italian at Gmail. Um, well, let me see what's going on here. Dynamite, I'm a savage. <laughs> uh, I don't know, bro. I did, bro. That's what I did a search of. Um, I mean, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter. That's cool. I'll check it out. It's good that, you know, his, uh, <laughs> his name popped up in something. That's, that's good for him, but it doesn't change anything. Uh, he still wasn't what he said he was. There's no fucking way. Yeah, bro, that don't show up on here, man. I watch my email, but I'll check it out either way after the video or something. But yeah, uh, he wasn't what he says he is. He killed the Pope and all that shit. Come on, guys. I, I don't know if Mob Facts is just um, a supporter of his and believes him, but... Big man on betting ones that are my eyes retired by then. This is Jimmy Burge. Oh, you you talking about how... Uh, Raymondi says that Meyer Lansky actually planned the Lufthansa heist. It was his thing. <laughs> that was good, too. Oh, shit. Um, big man, I'm betting. If he was a military sniper, he'd have surely uh, the all-time kills record, all-time confirmed kills in Vietnam is 116. You can also tell he has very limited weapons knowledge. You can come on if you want, bro. I'll drop the link for you. Let me know if you want to come on. Mm -hmm. um, BK Linnell, 38. I know I've seen him in Coney, wannabe, yeah. Apparently he was a staple there. All right, let me uh, drop it, bro. All right, mom facts. Um, there you go, Jeff. Yeah, guys, you know, uh, there's only so much you could do with a guy like that. And and I knew that situation before I even went into it tonight. There's going to be a whole lot of horse shit. Um, if you would have heard this, the way this dude was screaming at me on the, on the phone earlier in the day, I was like, uh, are you done? Are you want let me talk now? Uh, it was absurd. Um, and I knew he was going to be uh, fat, bald, Italian at Gmail. I knew he was going to be, uh, you know, just doing dumb shit on the interview and just doing what... Uh, Kind of the same type of thing A-Light would. Just keep repeating your fucking stories and insisting that they're true.
That's all he could do. Where can we watch the rerun of that broadcast? Uh, I might, I'll probably put it up on here. Um, but you can go to Stacks, uh, chatting with Stacks to watch it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put it on here or not. Oh, here we go. Sis came through. Found this. October 7, 1970. Salvatore Salvi Burns Grinelli, reportedly, reputedly a mafia figure, was found in the trunk of an automobile, shot to death on the Lower East Side, etc. Couldn't copy it all. Yeah, I read that. Uh, well, I talked about that yesterday. And he had four twenty two caliber bullets in his head. They said he had been dead five to ten days. What's up, my friend? How you doing, buddy? Good, man. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I know. I've been hanging out. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Fun I, earlier. Yeah, you know, the problem with that guy is, man, you're never going to be able to get a word in edgewise. He has an answer for everything. And that's the yeah. problem, to saying His story's too perfect. You ever notice he's related? So was all Cosa Nostra related somehow? Because he seems to make it – you know what I'm saying? Like oh, every yeah. everybody was related to everybody. Carlo Gambino hated Carmine Galanti. They were not hanging out together. And he did say that all those guys were his uncles, Luciano, Galanti, uh, Emil Della Croce. Like, uh, I don't know where to begin with the guy. I mean, he's he's uh, he's got an answer for everything too. You know, it's almost like everything is just boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's the problem with arguing with a fucking liar. You know what I mean? Thank you, Southie Thirty One. And it's like you don't even know how deep he's went into this. Like maybe he went out and like got fake paperwork, and like this guy might be like seriously invested in this. You know? I know. Right? We should take a trip to Bay Ridge tomorrow, Jeff, and go get his paperwork. Well, we could set it up. I would love to actually. I would love to see that guy. I mean, I, I just don't think of it like when you speak to him. Like he's always just going to go to the. Well, come see me, that tough guy. You know? Oh, no, like, no. How long did he do that? He did that for like the last ten minutes of the show or something. Like, and it's see- like. And, and he, I think you made a pretty good point about like, it seems like when you're kind of lost in an argument, you're like, oh, well, I, I can't hear you. My connection's breaking up. I can't yeah, hear yeah. you. you know, it's like, yeah, it's like I said, when A Light was on Lee Cole and his show, his phone was all over the phone. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. It's the same shit. It's a, that's their little insurance policy. Blame the phone. Dynamite 499 FBS, you're the man, good stuff. You should have brought up him planning out the Lufthansa heist with my Lansky. Ha ha clown. Yeah, that's, that's actually dynamite. And I would have, but like Jeff is probably about to say, it would have been the same shit. He would have just said, yes, 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 that's the truth. And he said it over and over and then started yelling, and that would have been it. So, yeah, what he'll say is like, and, and like I've said before, and I'll tell you, like, no matter how small you were in the in the life, right? Whether you were a small fry to, to the boss. There's some sort of documentation. Like, look up Gene or look up any of these guys. There's documentation. Go on Gangland News, Jerry's uh, column. I have mm-hmm. it. Search his name. Don't you listen? If anyone was going to tell you he was legit, it would be me. I will never, and you, you won't either. You'll never rewrite history. No. Whether you agree with it or not, you're not going to say, well, that guy didn't do this, that guy did that. I would tell you if I that, that, that this dude was real. Yeah. Like I would be the first to tell you that because I'm not going to be the one to rewrite history. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just yeah. like I said, everything he says is just too perfect. Yeah. Like why would Lucky Luciano? Which, by the way, I don't know if if any of the folks that are listening are aware when they take your passport, it is impossible to get back in a country. Mm-hmm. And what he doesn't tell you is. He was checked by the Italian police every week that he was still in Italy. So he's going to risk life in prison to go see the birth of him. (laughs) I know, bro. I I mean, the claims are so fucking absurd and so out there. Like, as soon as this dude talked about being involved in killing the Pope, that should have been it. He should have been blacklisted from all media, social media. Another thing, if, if that was so true, so does the does Interpol, the FBI, the Vatican? No one researched and looked into his story. They didn't question him. That like he was talking well, about. I just his answer to that, if you heard, is that the Vatican is its own country within a country, and they, nobody can do anything about anything that happens within the Vatican, which is horseshit. That's not true. Yeah, but he was a fugitive. He left the country. 
Yeah. Like, they don't have – I think he's right in – that's one thing he is right about. They. I don't believe the Vatican, you can – um. like, that would be a country you'd want to go to if you got wanted to get away with a crime. Yeah, you know, they don't have a, a, a treaty. He's back in America, and he's talking about this shit, and nobody has any interest in it. I guess the question is, what is the most ridiculous thing he says? Because, like, everything is more ridiculous than the next. Like, I couldn't understand what he was saying to you. Like, I watched I, I watched about 20 minutes of it. I, I didn't understand how on earth – like, he was trying to justify that when you kill somebody, you can do as much crime as you want until you're 24, and you can somehow <laughs> still get away with it. Yeah. And it's like – I guess I've heard situations where, like, if you had, like, a petty larceny, like, they were willing to overlook it or whatever. Yeah. But this dude literally says he killed somebody, shot him in the head 13 times. Who his head clean off. Yeah, and they just said, no, it's all right. Don't worry yeah, about it. You're good. As long as you go fight for us, you're good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, back in the day, they would do shit like that, but it would be done in court. You don't get sentenced, go to Atlanta, which you wouldn't have went to Atlanta at USP. But, and then and then a uh, counselor or whoever um, comes to you and says, hey, listen, I got a way to get you out. No fucking way, man. That would have been, it would have happened in court. The judge would have said, listen, I'm going to give you an alternative to a sentence. You know, and that's like you said, that's if it was a minor crime, maybe even up to something like Grand Theft Auto. OK, right. maybe even that far. Anything beyond that, no fucking way. But, you know, that would have been on in, in court. They would have said, you know, alternative to a prison sentence is you go fight in Vietnam. Um, but not for blowing a guy's head clean off. <laughs> if he killed 300 people. OK, I looked it up. The all time record is 116 kills in Vietnam. Okay, and the guy got like all sorts of awards. Like he, you know, and I'm sure he's not proud of that. This guy talks about it like he's proud of it, if it was actually true, which it isn't. That's the worst thing about this guy. He is taking something that is so sacred to so many people. I didn't serve in the military, but I'll tell you right now, especially after today, with the people that died, those poor people in Afghanistan, those soldiers. That is the sickest part of this guy. He is making shit up like that. You want to make up to you a wise guy, whatever. A lot of people do it, but that's the real deranged part of this. Just that, and he almost like when he talks about it, he's like almost proud of it. Like I killed three hundred people. It's like you're proud of that. Like Vietnam was like a really like a, from a war standpoint, it was a lot of bad things that went on there. It's it's really sickening. And like I said, his weapons knowledge. I think someone mentioned this to you, and you might have even said it. I think he said he shot that dude with a Colt 45, right? He said a Colt 45 Magnum, which doesn't even exist, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, but a Colt 45 doesn't have – his weapons knowledge is completely off. Yeah. It, like, there's a, a Winchester 45 Magnum, but, you know, not with the capacity and stuff. No. It's just – it's really odd. I. It's like it's always almost like he knows more than everybody else. It's like, well, Jerry Capici doesn't know who the hell you are. There were guys that were in the, the the crew that didn't know who the hell you were. He served with John Franzese. That was it. By the way, here's how another thing. He said he served under Jerry Lang. Okay, Jerry Lang was a boss. He didn't serve under Jerry Lang. Jerry Lang. So was it when he was a cop? While you served under him, Jerry Lang didn't communicate with soldiers when he was a boss. What the hell would he know about you? Of course not. No, and you know uh, he wasn't even if he was anything. It certainly wasn't even the level of soldier associate maybe um but yeah it's uh it's like you said i think the most despicable and the most unbelievable lie even above involvement in killing the pope is the the military stuff and it really does make me sick the stolen valor of that i mean to just say it like it's nothing i got this tattoo for my first 150 this for 300 and and only a certain few of us have it okay i think it's one of the worst things you can do like as as like when you make up these lies and there are these people out there, like the, they're really you know, mentally ill, frankly, but uh, you know, and then he made a comment and this was a small comment. And if you don't know who this guy is, you might just not really understand Hugh McIntosh. Okay. Hugh McIntosh was Carmine Persico's a driver, bodyguard. He's an Irish guy, big dude. He says that's his cousin. Mm -hmm. McIntosh is Irish. <laughs> Meyer Lansky. Meyer Lansky wasn't Italian either. He says, well, they were my, they were like my uncles. Okay, fair enough. So 
Meyer Lansky in the 50s. He was born in 53, this guy, Ramundi, right? So during the 50s, that was probably the most important part of Meyer's life. He was down in Cuba. They had a lot going on. So during all that, he happened to spend years on end teaching this little five, six-year-old kid about how to kill people. And, you know, it, the timelines just don't even make sense. It's And then he has this ridiculous way of how he's related to Lucky Luciano. My uh, second cousin's half-brother had sex with the dog, and then they did this, and then that's how I'm related. Yeah, I'm related to Donald Trump and everybody. Yeah, I'll tell you who I'm related to. I could make shit up. We could all make shit up. Oh, yeah. It's like a daydream with this guy. He has dreams at night, and then he just writes them down and says, well, let me perfect that one. Okay, there, there. So it's really weird, man. It is, bro. The whole thing is uh, is is disgraceful. It really fucking irritates me. And did you look up? Did you look up the thing about him in Coney Island? That little trailer. I saw that. That's that's <laughs> another thing. I, I think maybe he for, and, and I'm sure and I guarantee he probably forgot about that. Oh yeah. And he probably was sick that you found it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, cosplaying yeah. as a mobster. That's what he's doing. It's like these people that you know, like on Halloween, you dress up like somebody. Now, some of us actually dress like that in a, in a way, but I mean, he's got the fucking cigar, the the sunglasses, you know. And and I think that's the biggest problem is is we've talked about this with a light and some of those people. These these big platforms just hear mafia and they're like, I got to get this guy on, but it's like there's literally no fact checked on there. Nice. And you're generalizing these people and allowing them to tell these stories. And like I saw one of his videos has like hundreds of thousands of views. And it's like, like I've had people come to me. They're like, can you do a show on Anthony Ramundi? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, he's not real. It's not true. No, nope. no, I know, man. It's fucking. Uh, it, I'm, I'm, I came to the conclusion. I was talking to Shanna about this earlier tonight. That if you have an Italian last name and you look a certain way, even if you don't look a certain way, if you have an Italian last name and claim some mob history and some, you know, Vlad will put you on his fucking show. Oh, yeah. Oh, Vlad God. does know. He does. He strictly. And I used to like Vlad. Like, he has some good interviews. I, I definitely listened to him in the past. But with the mob stuff, he's in way over his head. He does no research to even. Like, Sicilian, I told you this before. and I think you would agree. All we need to know is when I go to Google and I type you in, if all we have on you is what you're telling us. Then you were nobody. Right. Yeah. Don't you think Jerry Capiccio would have written about this guy over the years? Of course. Or, 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 you know, somebody would have wrote about him in a book somewhere or, or something. He's the one guy that got away with it all. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like. And you got to look at who he's talking about. I mean, he's talking about legendary, I mean, fucking Luciano, Galanti, you know what I mean? Neil Della Croce. These are the people he's talking about. Like, if he was that deep, he was in with these people. Uh, Meyer Lansky before he died. Um, and then, you know, uh, the Colombo family, Greg Scarpa, all these people he claimed to be close to. And we know nothing about him? What was he, a fucking yeah. ninja? Was he invisible? How? It's really bizarre, man. I, You know, I... I Again, I, I feel like I try to know a lot about a lot of people. You know, I feel like we all do, but it's like this guy. And I think you made a good point about his carny crap. It seemed like that failed. And he said, you know what? I'm from Brooklyn. Or maybe he's from Brooklyn. I don't know if he is. Maybe I could just pretend I'm a mobster and I could sell books. I mean, think about it, Sicilian. Let's say the book's 30 bucks or 25, whatever it is. I think if he could just sell, you know. A certain amount of books. I mean, it's not hard to sell stuff, you know, especially if you have a bullshit story. I mean, I'm sure people bought that book. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. You know, people will buy just to, 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 he should put a disclaimer. Even the guy, the, the, the agent he has, he's like, I can't verify any of his stories. Like, he actually said that. Well, yeah. And, and I saw that, I don't know if it's on the book or if it's, um, if it was on the Amazon thing. I don't know, but I saw it, it was titled, uh, the possibly something, 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 the possibly true stories. Yeah. Of Luciano <laughs> Ramon. So, you know, nobody takes it seriously. You know what I mean? Like, but you're, listen, I think that's what happened. I think his businesses got shut down in Coney Island. He realized, fuck, I got to come up with some new scam because that's what he was. Uh, they, the news fucking outed him as a, as a con artist on hidden camera. 
Um, so he figured, what can I do next? And he just created this persona and started telling mob stories. And you know another thing, you know, you know why I kind of, you know, I kind of jump up with as well. Every person he talks about that he knew or did business with, they're all dead. Oh yeah. No, yeah. he's he has not talked about anyone alive. No. Because if he was around since 2007 or whatever, I mean, most of those guys are still around, right? Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, it's um, it's just, it's complete nonsense. I mean, total nonsense. The, the Luciano thing might be the funniest. Like, he literally possibly gave up his entire freedom to get on a plane multiple times and go see him. I know, man. I mean, it's just, I, I don't even... Yeah, he's a fucking snake oil salesman. He's full of shit, man. And you know the sad thing about it, too, is like I, I'm never going to glorify the people that we talk about. You know, they're right. bad people. We all know that. But there is some – you know, there's something glorious about that life, you know, like it, their history of it and everything that went on and truly how much control they had. And, you know, it's almost in a way it, it, it's it's America, you know, to, to know about this stuff and, and to, to, to like the movies and all that stuff. And then you have people like this that just come in and try to really – just dumb everyone down and and some people believe this crap you know it's yeah. uh it's shameful really i mean well that's the funny part um the fucking mob genre really is that big that there's even room for bullshitters like him it's sad but it's true you know what i mean that's you know i almost wish we had more of the genuine guys you know even like somebody like john Gotti jr out here telling their stories just so people weren't so hungry for any mob stuff that they'll buy into the A lights and the Ray Mondays of the world. You know what I mean? Like I, I wish it could be different, but I well, know. I think also, and and I'll say this pretty candidly, you know, the, the individual that, that you were on the show with that, that guy that hosts the show, I mean, people like him are contributing to that. We cannot put these people on that. You can't, I know you want the views and I have no problem. I guess you, I know you want the view. I get it. But it's like, we have to have some sort of like, you know, just some sort of ethic like like i would like to call that guy out but it's like i'm also not gonna i'm not gonna give him any platform the fact that i you know we're even talking about it sucks but we have to because we're trying to help and hopefully somebody sees it but it's like it's just brutal man it, it's really dumbed down nonsense that other guy's the same way that Kauchi guy I mean, he's the same way i mean that guy there's no legitimate information on either yeah, yeah, and I, I listened to some of his stuff today because somebody kind of recommended it last night. And yeah, I don't his stories are outrageous, man. I, I don't I don't give that guy any credibility either. But you know, it's um it sucks. It sucks that, you know, a once like I mean you look at some of these guys that were in the life, you know, the Gigantes and the Salernos, and then and this is where we are. You know, th this is it, you know, this is where it all ends. Watch someone someone will give this idiot a movie contract. Watch. Oh, yeah. Well, it's bad enough. He was talking in one of his fucking interviews, maybe it was the Harbinger one, talking about his part two to his book. And I'm like, two books? You're going to let this fucking cocksucker put out? Are you serious? Oh, the Harbinger guy is the worst. You could tell he doesn't know anything about the mob. He's nothing. like, oh, really? That really happened? Yeah, nothing, bro. Uh, he doesn't know a thing. He just sits there and listens. And, and he's very impressed with all of it. Yeah, it's like, wow, this guy was in the mob? No way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like, he's no, all, he wasn't. He's all taken by his stories and shit. But do you... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, do you have... What do you think is the craziest thing he says? The Pope thing, probably? Um, Honestly, I think the craziest thing is the 300 kills. But the Pope thing is probably, you know... Yeah, I don't know. It might be the most ridiculous. I mean, to even talk about you, you were involved with killing the Pope. Come on. I mean, you should be right there. You should be just blacklisted, like I said. I mean, but why does he like, uh, does he think like they're just not going to ever come talk to him about that? I don't know. Like, he, didn't he claim he like gave the Pope cyanide or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that, they, they put him out basically with Valium. And then they put cyanide in his tea. <laughs> or no, like, cyanide came after. I don't know. <laughs> the the Nigerian thing is, I mean, again, Nigeria is not a country you just run around and do what the fuck you want. You know, I, I don't know. 
it's it's almost just there should be some sort of disclaimer that he should put out. I mean, that would be really helpful, but yeah, really. Uh, but you know, I don't know, man. The whole fucking- I mean, someone says the Iceman taught him. I mean, the Iceman lied a lot, but like at least he killed people. Like he actually did kill people. You know? Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me see what this says. Yeah, at least I. Yeah, the, and the Iceman. You know, we can find stuff about him. We can confirm that you know who he's killed. Not not everybody he says, but those are the ones we know are bullshit. This yeah. guy is just nothing. And the one the one about the Nigerian warlord, how he told him the joke about the nun and the priest. And the, did you hear that? He got the yeah, Nigerian yeah. warlord in Great. a car, and with the gun the Nigerian warlord gave him, a, a type of gun that doesn't even exist. He gets in the car with the warlord. He's playing friendly with him. He tells him a dumb joke. When the warlord bends over laughing, he shoots him in the back of the head. <laughs> By the way, is that uh, – did, did I miss the definition? Is That's murder, isn't it, as far as I know? Uh, yeah, I'll say. Like on camera, I admit it. I killed the Nigerian warlord. Hey, idiot. You know they can still look, that, look you up on that. Yeah, and they're going to send – you're telling me the Captain Bass, okay – is gonna say he's got the entire fucking U.S. military. He's gonna send your your monkey ass to fucking uh, Nigeria, and you're gonna sneak in somehow, side up to this uh, Nigerian drug lord just like that, and kill him. And almost gives you a headache. I mean, it almost is like just. And that's the thing. Like everything about this guy, he has an explanation for everything. Mm-hmm. Like all of his cases. Like I think you made a comment. His all his cases are way too important. They're, they're all – I mean, we can probably locate at this point who killed fucking JFK, but we can't figure out what this guy did. It's all yeah. still hidden. Yeah. You know? Yeah, everything he claims, bro, there's a reason why you can't find out about it. Oh, the records are sealed. The records are sealed. Or, you know, like – he said something to me on the phone earlier today that was something like that about how he was like – he flew under the radar. That's why nobody heard of him. How far oh, yeah. under the radar did you fly? He's the one that got away with it all. <laughs> but he's broke and working at a carnival stand. Yeah, forget about Jackie Knows D'Amico. We got uh, Anthony Luciano Ramondi, <laughs> the last man standing. Another thing, I heard him say Lucania. It's Lucania, by the way, not Lucania. Lucania, yeah. idiot. Yeah. What an idiot. What a complete imbecile. You know, like I would at least, if I was going to do what he's doing, I wouldn't pick like the most written about, most well documented. Yeah, yeah. I would do writer. little things. Yeah, yeah. I would pick some, you know, like side guys, some guys on the side, somebody that's not, you know, super fucking out there and important. Let me ask you: Do you feel like you could? Do you feel like you could if you disappeared? Let's say no one who you were. Let's say. Do you think you could come back and cosplay as a mobster? I feel like I have enough knowledge to do that. Probably. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would probably just pick, like, I wouldn't say I was, like, with Sonny Franzese and 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 Jerry Lang, but, like, I would say, like, yeah, I, I definitely moved around with some people. I had a bookmaking operation. Obviously, no gambling. So, I, you know, but it's, like, this guy went, like, to, like, the biggest possible things ever done and was, like, yeah, yeah, that was me. I did that. That's and it better. I went to Vietnam, too, killed 300 people. <laughs> That's the thing about these liars, like like him and A-Late and stuff. They can't just say, "Hey, I was on the fringes," or "But I was involved with the mob." But yeah. I was not too big, you know. They'd still have an interesting story. A-Late could tell his actual story, and it would be fascinating enough to build a career off of. But they, for some reason, they have to take it to these extremes, man, where they were with the biggest and the baddest, and they were somehow. Did you hear him say his father was the top enforcer for the National Commission? Yeah, but he wasn't made or anything like that. He was, he killed Joe Gallo, which is complete nonsense. He killed Albert Anastasia, which he says is complete. Eh, that's complete nonsense. I mean, he's invo- he's Frank Sheeran, but like, well, actually, he's not even Frank. She- he's he's not even Johnny Russo. At least Johnny Russo like was in The Godfather and you know kind of knew a couple people. You know, yeah. this guy just. Literally, he just has dreams at night and says, wow, that was a good dream. I'm going to write that down. And he puts them all together and just says, now it's me. It's actually almost pretty fascinating that he's gotten people to believe this nonsense, truly. Yeah, I, I'm telling you. Um, Vlad must be hard up, man. 
I'm, bro, there's something wrong with people's fucking brains, man. But like I said, I think there's such a hunger for this mob stuff that people yeah. just take it from wherever they can get it, unfortunately. Um, but this dude, man, I mean, come on. What, what the fuck? There's no proof of anything. This guy couldn't. You heard what he said when I asked him about the military? He said, I have dog tags. Are you fucking kidding me? You can get Everybody. dog tags. Yeah. yeah. You can go to the knickknack uh, 99 cent store and get dog tags. <laughs> yeah. Yo, know, my God. I mean, does he is he serious with that? I mean. Oh, bro, dead serious. By the way, and then he has the gall. I heard him on an interview have the gall to say, that Irishman, yeah, that's a bullshit story. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually called someone out for bullshit stories. Yeah, and he said he said um, that he told Scorsese, if you want the truth. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. You're going to give Scorsese the truth. And then I'm said, telling you, someone's going to give this guy a fucking film deal. Watch. Yeah, it's it's sad, but probably, man, probably. But you know what he'll just say? He'll he'll just say, well, like, so and Rab, Jerry Capisci, they weren't in the streets. How would they know? That's what he'll just always say. He always yeah. says a comeback for everything. Well, did you hear what he said in the beginning of the interview? He talked about that plane thing, which I never – I didn't care about that anyway. See him yeah. on plane. And he goes, How old are you? I said 42. You weren't even fucking alive when this happened. When what happened? I don't even know if you're talking about a real plane crash. You know what the story sounded like? The opening scene in La Bamba. <laughs> Do you remember that when he's yeah, vaguely, yeah. He's the plane crash. <laughs> that's what or not the opening scene, but that, that plane crash scene. That's what I think that's where he got that story. But but like I could but I, any of us could say, like, well. Yeah, you know my um, my great uncle was Jackie knows D'Amico. Who would like? Yeah, I could say that if I wanted. Mm -hmm. I could say I'm dis. I could say my name's Jeff Gotti. I'm distantly related to the Gotti family. <laughs> yeah, and even though I just need is a hundred, couple hundred people to believe me. And the know? funny part is, I hate to say this, but even though we have a Gotti in the chat room at all times, who could say yeah. no, you're not. A small segment of people will still believe you. And think, and think if I, like, legally went to some steps to, like, change my name maybe or, or whatever. Like, I could go to Vlad and be like, yo, my uncle was Gene or John. Like, they were my uncles. <laughs> I used to be at Christmas. Look, there's me, a little baby, you know? Like, and I love the thing that he says he has pictures. That could be anybody. I mean, he does look pretty – it does look like a mom. I'm not going to lie to you, you know? But it's it's just – it's bizarre. It really is bizarre. It is. Angel the, said, <laughs> like I said, uh, Sicilian, the biggest thing we need to remember is everybody he talks about is dead. Everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. No one can come. No one can, uh, you know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Dynamite 199. FBS, why is Stax promoting this MOOC? I don't get it. I asked Stax that. I think Stax just, he's, he knows it's entertainment. Must have views, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he takes it seriously. I don't know. I can't speak for him, but I think it's just the entertainment factor. Um, you know, like we just said, there's people out there that'll listen. I mean, think about it. If you could get a thousand people to buy the book, you know, that's a quick, you know, a quick come up. You know, yeah. you do it every couple of years. You know, you find some ways to sell cigars or whatever the fuck he's doing, you know. Yeah, and you know, I tried, I was actually, I tried to get that pushed back. Because if I'm going to debate somebody, I want to know everything about them. So I was actually going to push it back and read his book. And I looked it up. It's not even on Audible. Like, so I would have had to actually read it. Um, and sitting through that would have been torture. But um, they wouldn't do it. He refused. He fucking refused to push it back. He wanted it tonight at 8 on Stax's show. I'm like, all right, fine, fuck it. You know what? Because... Obviously, he wants to be in some sort of safe territory or something. I don't know. Again, go to Gangland News. There's an archive. You can pay five bucks and get on it. Search the name. There's not one article about this guy. There's not one police report about him. There's no court records. I looked it up on Pacer. You know what's on Pacer? Bankruptcy case? Bankrupt. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I heard somebody else say that. And he shot himself. Yeah. And he tried to say tonight that that wasn't him. He shot himself in his leg with his own gun. Yep. Cheddar Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I did shoot myself in the leg with my own gun. And he did get jumped. Ball six, you chumps. And Wink did fuck his girl. He's still oh, standing here. Yeah, yeah, fuck the free world. world. <laughs> don't ever try to judge me, dude. You don't know what the fuck I've been through.
but I know something about you. You went to Cranbrook. That's, That's a, a private school. <laughs> this guy's a gangster. His real name's Clarence. Clarence lives at home with both parents. <laughs> and Clarence's parents have a real good marriage. This guy don't want to battle. He shook. This ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. <laughs> that's yeah, that's cool. him. He shot himself in his leg. That's yeah. that's you know, and that's funny, uh, Sicilian. That's the one thing someone else wrote about him that he didn't tell us about. The one oh, yeah. thing that's actually true about him. Yeah, I wonder why he didn't want us to know about that. And he said, you know, that wasn't me. That was my cousin. Every everything's cousin, cousin, cousin. Except it was him. I looked up the article. It's his age. It's from he's from Brooklyn. It's him. There's no doubt. His cousin. Yeah. You uh, know what? You know what? You know what will come out next? That, you know, uh, what's the next lie from this guy? I mean, is he going to come out with any more lies? You think? Oh yeah, I think he's going to do an A light. I think he's going to have to keep stepping it up, especially since we just listen. I don't care what anybody says. But if people listen to me on that show and listen to him and they still believe any of that shit, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, because, you know, I, if, if I did nothing else, I made it clear that there's no proof. And he made it clear that he doesn't have any. I feel like though with, with like Gianni Russo, I feel like Gianni just does it and like he laughs about it. He think it's he thinks it's funny. He's like an old guy. You know, it's just funny. You know, he's got some excitement in his life. No one really takes him seriously. But this guy like actually believes this shit. It's yeah. gotta be exhausting lying that much. Wouldn't it be exhausting? Like to just you gotta know everything, you gotta be on point every time. It's like it's like an actor. Yeah, and you can't make any mistakes or we can't. Yeah. It's like he said, I watched the interview five minutes before I did this little debate with him, and he said he was 28 when he went to do the Pope thing. But he realized we figured out his age. And when I asked him again, he said, No, I just turned 25. It's got to be exhausting. I mean, that would be, it's not even fun. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know, but I think there'll be more. I think, uh, I think we'll be making more videos on this guy. <laughs> I mean, the, the planning, Lufthansa, I mean, Meyer Lansky was retired by then. He died just a few years later. That was the Jimmy Burke thing. That was not a, a Meyer thing. Yeah. Meyer had he didn't do anything. They were known the Vario crew for hijacking. They they owned the airports. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what that, an that, idiot! That's what they did. That and when I, I actually just heard that one today, I was going to the bank and I heard the fucking uh, the thing about that about the Lufthansa heist, and I had to actually just stop and sit in the car for a minute and listen. I was like, is this guy for real? Like he's actually trying to get us to. Yeah, but what's crazy was like he actually did tell the truth on what happened. That that Maury guy, which we you and I've talked about, Martin Krugman, was actually the guy that kind of connected everybody. He owed money to Burke. You know, they had connections through these different people that worked at the airport because they all owed money to Burke as well, and, and they they operated it. You know, it, it's how the fuck is he involved with it? He's really involved with everything. You know, next he'll say he was involved with the Castellano hit. Watch. Yeah. He was a backup shooter. That's what he'll say. Him and I like. Yeah. Uh, Frankie Brooks, his dog tags literally list the company that only exists in college. <laughs> <Modern Air Force. laughs> really? Is that true? No, no I, I don't know. He's probably just fucking around. That would be funny. God, that would be hilarious. If true. Uh, Jason Mike so, uh I pronounce it right, Mike Sell? I think so. Are you a fight fan? If you had to bet, who are you taking? Sicilian Jake, the YouTube sensation, boxing king, uh, Paul <laughs> versus Tyrone Woodley. Oh, man. Listen, uh, there's a huge size difference. I know that shit. Uh, I bet Woodley already. So. Yeah, I would have to because that's how I want it to go, if, if nothing else. But, yeah, I, I think mean, Woodley, and I certainly fucking hope so. I hope we got to get rid of those two motherfuckers, Jake and Logan. For yeah, they ain't going anywhere. I don't think. I know they're not. I know, but um, yeah, uh, it would have to be. I, I would fucking pray. <laughs> Jesus. You think Franzese will do a show on this guy? He's got it right. If he does, I think he's just. I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think he's doing himself any favors. I mean, when you're at the level of Franzese, Fr you know what I, I compare Fr Franzese to basically in this genre now is like Eminem. Like Eminem, you know how 500 dudes can diss Eminem and he can just, the best thing he can do is ignore it. And he'll only ever acknowledge 
like somebody who really matters, you know what I mean? Like yeah. so, or whatever, somebody who really bothered him. Uh, I think that's Franz East in the genre now. He's so he's so high, his level is so high that why pay attention to these fucking I just feel like he is kind of running out of ideas. And I noticed the other night, like the other day, he was talking about like that Norby Walters thing that people were saying he was a rat, and he actually addressed it. So I feel like maybe he'll just do it and be like, Yeah, this guy, I didn't know who the hell he was. He did it with Ori Spado, so maybe he'll do it with uh, with this guy. I hope so, because you know what? I mean, this guy is using his name kind of like Ori Spado did. So I don't know, man. Maybe, I guess know, the thing is, he, anyway. he might not want to give him any any press, I guess. But but this guy, like, you would think by now he would have a YouTube channel, this idiot. He's probably too, too dumb. Well, they say that... Uh, Stacks kept saying that he doesn't even know how to use his phone and shit. From what we saw tonight, I kind of believe him because holy shit, man. I don't know what the fuck that was all about. Um, mob facts, it's it's fatballed Italian at Gmail. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, bro. It's fucking like even me, I didn't I'm no fucking buddy and I didn't want to do this shit tonight. I gotta yell at this old man who's obviously a bullshitter and I'm gonna accomplish nothing because he's gonna keep lying anyway. Yeah. But at the That's same the time, thing. yeah, at the same time, how could I not? If I'm gonna call these guys out and they want to confront me at all, I'm gonna con- you know, I'm gonna do it. Whatever. I, I got to. Uh but it's such a waste of time. It's just I like- guarantee. Real quick, I guarantee he has paperwork that's fake. I guarantee. Like, he probably has this all planned out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it if he has something. And he just knows more than everyone. He knows more than Capisci. He knows more than, you know, everyone. Oh, of course. Well, didn't you hear what he said? That anybody who doesn't believe his stories is either misunderstanding them or, or too stupid to, to mm-hmm. read them right. That's sometimes. another thing. He's smarter than everybody else. We know. Sure. All these liars always are. Uh, A-Light's another one. He's always the smartest guy in the world. Walter, I guess you're, Chris, that was a great show. Thank you, Walter. I guess we're just getting to the point where we just got to, like, let them do their thing, you know, and hope, like, you know, when, you, when you're asked about them, just say, I don't believe them. You know, I think they're bullshitting. But it doesn't seem like these fucking idiots are going to ever slow down some of these cats. No, it really doesn't, man. Uh, K-Max says, frustrating as fuck with that guy's phone. Dude, you have no idea, man. For me to go through all that horse shit and yelling and arguing and all that nonsense and then listen back and realize you can't even hear a fucking word I'm saying. Yeah, that sucks, but it is what it is. I mean, M- Michael addressed the Norby thing because I think Frankie's right, probably. I'm sure Sammy used it against him, and he should have. Listen, Michael continued to – he'll try to, like, say that what he did, he didn't cooperate. He literally testified against the dude. If that's not cooperating, I don't know what is. I don't know why he just doesn't accept it. You know? No, I know. And I heard him finally acknowledge it and stuff and talk about it. And, you know, the same old type of excuse. Like, you don't understand. I saved his life three times. So you saved his life three times, so it's okay to, to then testify against him? He'll just justify it because he'll just say, well, the guy wasn't in the mob. You know? And it's like, well, yeah, but he was your friend. Like, yeah. And then he's like, you know, they put me on diesel therapy and they had me on for all this time. And, you know, they, uh, they basically, they, they, I had no choice. They were going to, they were going to start fucking with my father and they were going to lock him up. I had to, I was subpoenaed. I had to testify against Norby Walters. Come on. Well, then admit that. (laughs) You know, say you were a snitch, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, it doesn't matter with Michael (laughs) Francis. You know what I mean? There's only a select few who actually don't see him as a, as a cooperator. Um, even though he's actually said he's cooperated numerous times, but it doesn't matter. Like, look, Danny F just said it. Um, Michael cooperated. Doesn't matter to his cult members. It's the truth. All these guys have a cult, man. Sammy has one. Michael has one. They all do. I guess it's just how do you want to be remembered? And, you know, they're all going to be remembered that way, but... You know. yeah. Look, did Michael do some things? Yeah, he made a lot of money, but I mean, he's got to stop with this whole, you know, I'm a real gang. You know, it's like, well, you're not, you know, stop. Yeah. Let me do something real quick. I don't, when I put the link out there, guys, like it's only for the person I put it out there for. So try not to link on to it. But uh, Kelly G's Don't Rat is a good guy. So I'm going to let him on for a few minutes. 
But yeah, when I put a link out there, I gotta be wild. honest. I gotta jump off, guys. I gotta get up real early. I gotta go to New York, so I'm gonna catch you all later. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. I'll see you later. See you guys. All right, peace, man. All right. What's oh, up, man? Kelly, I, I, I'm. So- <laughs> What's up, man? You know, I'm opportunistic. I saw that link and I was just like, hmm. And nice glasses, yeah. by the way. Kind Thanks, similar man. to mine. Good yeah. style you got there. Um, yeah, I just uh I couldn't believe some of the military stuff. It bothered me really because um with my my brother really is he is, and I'll give you his name because I have your uh your email. My brother is a retired 35 years Green Beret Special Forces. Um, and that's how I, you know, got into, uh, firearms and I do the firearms training and stuff. He taught me stuff years ago and I know a little bit about the tattoos and stuff. And the guy was, um, if he was in special forces in the Marines, it's called force recon. He couldn't even say that when you were asking him. And then he kept getting, oh, the phone is fuzzy. Uh, I can't hear you whenever you would, um, you know, ask him anything, um, of anything. And then the, the, the craziest part, and he really squirmed on you on this one, was about Lucky Luciano. You're like, bro, what year were you born? 1953. <laughs> and you're like, he's in jail. How could he have been? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he started to squirm. That's when he got mad at you, man. It was pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, I, I think you handled him great because, I mean, as much as I wish I was next to you and I could have been like, you know what, fat ball Sicilian? Let's go meet up with him and get some paperwork. I'll wait in the car. <laughs> I got the extended magazine. And, you know, if he's got friends, hold on. Here's the Glock 20, 10 <laughs> millimeter. You hold on to this in the car. I'll go meet and get the papers from him. Look, anyone can be a gangster, right? I'm not a gangster, but I do love firearms. But, you know, the guy is a, is a freaking jabroni in its – purest form and i just wanted to compliment you and let you know you did a great job you know thank you man but yeah nothing a liar hates nothing more than being called yeah. out on lies. so i knew how it was going to go before i did it i even told my wife i was like i wish eight o'clock would just get here so i can get out get this out of the fucking way because i knew nothing yeah. was accomplished nothing i tried to look up stuff for him i, I found the same stuff you did uh, uh i don't know i'm nobody you know, you look stuff up on me. If you had my name, it'd be boring. But when guys start talking about 45 magnums and <laughs> blowing guys' heads off with 13 shots and I don't know. I, know. I meant to say a Colt 45 magnum. I, I know, know, right? This this is a Colt 45 right here. That's yeah. what this is. You yeah. know what I mean? This is the one that the GIs have. I love guns, right? It's empty. There's nothing in it. But and that's why I kind of – I brought it out and I'm like, this is a 45 ACP Colt. I yeah. think the guy was meaning that. That's the most popular gun, probably. But yeah, whatever. You know, guns don't make anybody tough. But uh, he really got squirming. He did not. Uh, he didn't like your questions. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I guess you know he was trying to be like kind of like a gentleman in the beginning because he thought maybe I'd go easy on him because I had already told Stacks I was going to destroy him. But there was yeah. no way I was going easy on him. I've had it with these guys, bro. I know, man. I was on um, someone else's show. I don't mention names even here. And um, that's how I found out about that you were on Stacked. Someone in the comment section was like, that bald Sicilian is spanking this motherfucker right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on Stacked's channel and I subscribed and I, I got in on there that last 30 minutes and I, that was great. It's, it's it's amazing how cell phone reception starts going bad when fucking lies get told, right? Isn't that something, man? In the beginning, amazing. The video, yeah. In the beginning of the video, his phone was fine. His picture was fine. Everything was fine. If you go back and watch it, like the first couple of minutes, and then all of a sudden it yep. started fucking up. Yeah, he went to the Johnny A Light school of hey, hey, let's move this around over here. <laughs> It's yeah, distraction, it's man. It's a classic way to, to, if you're lying, is to distract. Another telltale uh, sign of a liar, and Johnny A. Light was trained to not do this anymore, is they wear fucking sunglasses. Yep. Why are you wear, you're wearing sunglasses? Because even online, you don't want people to look you in your fucking eye because you're full of shit. So, okay. you know, sunglasses. Another guy that might have been around some people that is a fucking embellisher. I just don't think it goes any further than that. I don't think he killed anybody. 
I don't know. I, I, Jeff, Jeff nailed it. Jeff is the most, one of the most knowledgeable mafia guys out there. And um, I think Jeff said it perfectly. You know, you, you could tell, you could see these guys and you know, right away, if you know what you're looking at, and, you know, he was full of shit, but. Yeah. Brooklyn guy, Vinny Bronco, super sticker, 499. Thank you, uh, Brooklyn guy. People should subscribe to his channel too. I got to tell you about this dude, man. I don't listen to a lot of stuff, you know, that's not like this mob shit and stuff. But this dude, he has a calming fucking voice. Like, he's such a, like, a soft-spoken dude. And he has so much good shit to say. And he really gives good advice. And he talks about anxiety and bipolar and all this shit, man. You guys should really check him out. He does really yeah, good stuff. I have actually bad anxiety. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, that, that's why I smoke so much pot, man, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's going to be side effects to the goofy shit we did when we were younger and anxiety is one of mine. You know, it just is what it is. Absolutely. Um, like I have a lot of hobbies and that usually helps me, but yeah. Hey, I'm sorry for intercepting the stream, man. I just, Oh, that's all right. Bro. I just don't want everybody <laughs> to start doing it. You know what I, mean? I guess it speaks for my personality, man. I'm, I'm not opportunistic, uh, or, or a bad guy, but I definitely, you know, I'll see a crease and I'll get in there. I used to, I used to play football and I was a terrible running back, but sometimes when you see the crease, you just, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to get in there and talk to my boy over there on the East coast. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's <laughs> good. Um, but, but, but yeah, I'll let you go. Cause I'm going to hop off in a few minutes too. I appreciate okay, you. without an invite, this is the last time. I will, I won't do it. I'm sorry, but uh, right, man, everybody sorry. in the chat room, have a good night, and uh, God bless you, brother. All right, salute, man. I'll see you uh, next time. Salute. Um, LOS South Philly, LOS. Yes, how come you or us can't get into a thousand subs for real? Listen, man, I don't have that much power because I can't even get Shannon to a thousand subs. I mean, I can't believe that shit. Um, but. Uh, I try my best for everybody. Um, I try to help everybody. But I truly, I'm not bullshitting, man. I got to say that I listen to Brooklyn guy, Vinny Brocco's videos every day now. And he's really good, man. I don't think he realizes it. Uh, you have a gift, my friend. Uh, so, in my De Niro voice that I don't have. J JC Capone, 76. I'm so glad to see you in here, man. And JC's channel, too. I mean... Can't find a more inspirational uh, channel. The motivational videos he puts up every day are, are unreal, man. Uh, I'm sitting on my ass and he's doing fucking push-ups. You guys should check out JC Capone 76. Um, so, all right, guys, I think I'm going to roll. Well, I appreciate everybody showing up. I hope everybody liked my little uh, performance earlier. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I might put that Vinny, uh, video up on my channel at some point. I don't know. We'll see. But otherwise, you can go to chatting with Stacks and watch it. Um, oh, hold on. I'll answer one more question. Gianni Russo. FPS, I think you have talked about this. I'm so sorry. What do you think of the Gravano and Franzi sit down? Oh, like I said, I think it's, you know, mostly for show. It's entertainment. I don't think these guys have any problem with each other. I think this has been in the works for a while, and that's why some of the shit talking and dissing each other kind of took place. But, um, you know, it's going to be entertainment, and it looks wildly entertaining. I'm going to watch the shit for sure. I mean, if nothing else, it's two mod legends uh, sitting down together. So, um, you know, I'm going to watch it, but I don't, you know, I don't think that there's really anything happening. Like, you know what I mean? Like, ooh, are they going to fight? Are they going to make up? Nothing's going to happen. It's just going to be a show. You know what I mean? Um, JC Capone 76 staged. Absolutely, man. So. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to get going. I'm going to try to uh, – I think I'm just going to go to bed, to be honest with you. I've been going to bed too late lately. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to roll, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. If I'm not on with anything tomorrow, uh, I'll be on with Shanna at night. I know only certain ones tune in for that, but it's something I love doing, something she loves doing, and I'm going to continue doing it. Uh, and Sunday, you know, I got the interview with Jimmy Calandra, and that is going to be a fucking a super interview. I got a lot of things that I've been waiting a long time to talk to Jimmy about. So uh, I hope you guys tune in for that, too. So, all right, guys, uh, I'll see you next time, right? Like I said, uh, no later than tomorrow night. Have a good night.
Salute.